If what you're looking for in an alarm clock radio are just the facts, ma'am, this model from General Electric is probably just what you want. Let's shed some light on the situation. This is the General Electric model number 7-4601A alarm clock, and it is basically everything you need and nothing you don't. Oh sure, there might be some more things that you want, like a variable brightness display, but you don't get them on this particular model. It's very plain, very straightforward, and for those of you who operate in a space-constrained environment, it is also extremely compact. We begin our tour of this unit at the side-firing single-channel loudspeaker. You can't hope for stereo audio in a cabinet this small, but this clock radio manages to do the best it can with what it has, and it actually sounds surprisingly good, as we'll hear in just a moment. On the front, you get a fairly dim, in fact, the uh, light to the right of the unit is actually kind of washing it out right now, LED-style display with the usual fairly thick numbers. I'm not a huge fan of these displays, but implemented properly, they're just about as good as anything else. It's just the fact that they're so common that they don't really appeal to me. Down below that, you get an AM and FM scale for each of the broadcast bands. There's also a log scale, so if by some chance you were going to use that as a reference to determine where the stations you wanted to hear are actually located on the dial, well, you certainly could. I'm sure there are a few of you, especially younger viewers in the audience right now, who are saying, so that's what that thing that says log is for on the front of a radio or a clock such as this. I don't know exactly how old this unit is. I would guess early 80s. General Electric certainly sold a number of models very similar to this. In fact, my grandparents have what is probably a slightly new, newer version of this particular radio. And I might talk about that in a video in the future. Let's go ahead and take a look at the controls on the top of this unit, almost all of which pertain to the alarm and clock operation. Go ahead and tilt it forward here, just so you can see. Rather unsurprisingly, there's an awful lot of dust that's been gathered around these controls. I have not cleaned this thing up since I found it. It is being presented to you in as-found condition, except for the uh, long-since-forgotten 9-volt backup battery that I removed. Evidently, this was in a particularly dusty house. Here again, we have a snooze button without the Z. In my previous without the Z, I just did it again. <laughs> It's the Z that's there, it's the E that's not. I, I made that same mistake <laughs> in the previous video about a much fancier GE clock radio. And what do you know, I shot myself in the foot once again. We have a sleep timer so that you can listen to this thing while you fade off to sleep if you want. This is most likely the usual 59 minute type. You can adjust it downward by simply... What can you do? You can press the minute button. There you go, that's how you do it. And, of course, if you want to turn it off, you just depress the snooze button and the timer will be canceled and the unit will stop playing immediately. Right next to that is the wake button that allows you to set when this thing should wake you up in the morning, evening, any time you want, really. And then we have the time setting buttons. And here there's a bit of uh, an unfortunate issue with this particular unit's design in that there is no locking button to keep you from accidentally setting the time. So if it should ever happen that you're fumbling around absent-mindedly after this thing has awakened you, you'll probably end up inadvertently setting the clock. And then rounding out the user accessible controls on the top, we have the mode switch, which allows you to choose from an alarm, music, or to turn the radio off and on. Unfortunately, you cannot have the alarm set at the same time that you have the radio playing. You have to choose one or the other, or use the sleep timer. Of course, here again, this is a low-end, basic, and probably quite inexpensive compact model, and General Electric could be forgiven for really going overboard on the controls. On the side, of course, we have a tuning knob, which is the larger of the two, and then we have the volume control. Again, this is styled very, very similarly, though not identically, to the unit that I just discussed. And the only control there is on the back panel is the AM and FM band switch. There's also a battery compartment, and through these vent holes on the back, you can see the power transformer peeking through. This is another unit that was made in Malaysia, as opposed to Singapore. So let's go ahead and listen to it right now. We'll turn the power on to the radio, turn the volume up a little bit. We're listening to FM right now.
And sure, there's a little bit of background noise, but it's not too bad. Let's switch over to AM and just see what things sound like there, if we can actually hear anything down in the uh, back room of the basement here with all these computers and other radio frequency noisemakers sitting around. There are certainly a few things trying to sneak through. Hey, there's some music! I believe that's in Spanish, so it really doesn't mean very much to me, but it does, does serve as a reasonable demonstration of this unit's fidelity on AM, which, unlike pretty much anything of today where the AM tuner is an afterthought, if you even get one, the fidelity's not bad. So all in all, it's everything you need, nothing you don't. Sure, it could have had some improvements in the design, and the later models probably do make those improvements, but for what it is, it's not bad. So thank you as always for watching, and certainly do feel free to leave a comment if you happen to have one.